Hello, everybody. Turn your Bibles to Zechariah, Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H, chapter 14. Uh, this is going to be part 17 of the fire series. This is partly has to do when Christ comes back for his kingdom. All right, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Now, sometimes the Bible talks about the present. Sometimes it'll talk about the past. And then the future, all in the same paragraph. So, and it says, And the city shall be taken. And the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. Now, uh, if you want to read about that, you can read about it in the book of Jeremiah. You can read about that in the book of Daniel. Jerusalem was taken by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. The Chaldeans, they took it. They took Jerusalem as punishment. God was very angry with Judah. Read Jeremiah 3.8. He was angry. So he said, uh, no problem. You don't want to live by my rules. You can live by the rules of the Babylonians for 70 years. And then after 70 years, uh, the, the uh, let's see, the Persians, uh, modern day descendants would be the Iranians. The Persians conquered Babylon and allowed the Judeans to return to Jerusalem and rebuild it. And you can read about that in Ezra and Nehemiah. One of them was the priest and the other was the king. So, verse 2 of Zechariah 14. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken. And the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now, we're going to talk about the future. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day. What day? The day of the Lord that we read about in verse 1. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. Now, this... I believe in verse 3 when it says the Lord shall go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. I think that's talking about the battle of Armageddon. We'll cover that. I guess we'll go to that later. All right. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azale. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. All the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living waters, living waters, Waters. Where do we read that? Revelation. We'll go to there. That living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and winter it shall be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Is the Lord king over the, all the earth right now? I don't think so. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimon south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate 
unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel, unto the king's winepress. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Now, when has that ever happened? Recently. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Now, this is the future. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. To me, that sounds like a nuclear explosion. That's what it sounds like to me, where the heat, just all their flesh and their eyes and their tongues just go. What was that scene in the uh, Terminator movie where Sarah was in the uh, by the fence, by the playground, and the bomb, the nuke went off, the bomb went off, and all their flesh just went off their bones. I mean, uh, you know, Hollywood loves to mock the Bible. They love to do that. And they love to show us what they have planned. Generally, a movie is like 20, 30 years off into the future. Uh, but I don't know. That's I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying that's just something to think about. Verse 13, And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor, and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which come against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now people, obviously this is the future. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Now the Feast of Tabernacles is one of the uh, holy days mentioned in the books of Moses. I forget what book it's in. It's probably in Tabernacles and Leviticus. But uh, it's, one of, it's one of the holy days. And uh, evidently in the kingdom, we're going to be keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of, upon, will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. In that day there shall be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all that, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them, and seeth therein. And in that day, and in that day, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And if you don't know who the Canaanites are, please go my home page, uh, one of the comments in my sec, uh, where my name is in the video, click on my name, go to the home page, go to the top of the home page, 
about the middle of the page toward the top and it'll say playlist. Click on that. Then click on where it says the angels that sinned. And there's about, I don't know, 12, 15 hours of study and you'll understand where the Canaanites came from and why they won't be in the house of the Lord of hosts. Simple. They're satanic hybrids. Read Genesis 6, the sons of God. Read Job 38, the sons of God. They were angels. There's people who try to tell you, no, they're not. But, you know, when you get done about first two or three of my videos, there'll be no doubt the sons of God of Genesis 6 were fallen angels. I mean, after all, do believers and unbelievers, when they get married, do they have giants for children? Uh, giants with six fingers and six toes? Uh, no, they don't. You know, and, and I'm sorry, these giants don't play for the NBA, National Basketball Association. That's not what they're talking about. And then, you know, uh, instead of the Lord sending evangelists to preach to the Canaanites if they could be saved, no, he told Israel to go into the land and utterly exterminate them, slay them all, kill them all. Kill them all and let God sort them out. That's, you know, does that sound like uh, they have a chance for salvation? No. And in that day, there shall no more the Canaanite, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And I have people tell me, well, you know, all they got to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and they're going to be saved. Well, you can believe that if you want, but I don't think so. That's my opinion and uh, I'm stick. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right, let's contrast this with Revelation 16. I guess mm, verse. We'll start. Yeah, we'll start 11. Um. All right. So the wicked. This is what they're doing. Verse 11. Revelation 16:11. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their swords, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. All right, I know we read this before, but we're going to read it again. Revelation 20 and verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now, Satan's going to be locked up for a thousand years. Now, we establish that there's going to be children in the kingdom but yet there's not going to be any marriages in the kingdom. So where do these children come from? Uh, like I mentioned, I believe that there are pe children that died in childbirth, people that died, uh, children that died young, and those from the abortion. So, 
if everybody in heaven is saved, but there are children, um, I believe they're going to get new bodies and they're going to be allowed to be grown up and to decide uh, whether to accept the offer of salvation or to reject it. Now, I think during the thousand years, these kids are going to be grown up. They're going to have a thousand years of preaching. Uh, they're going to go up to worship the king at Tabernacles, which we just read. And then, um, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that, he, Satan, he must be loosed a little season. So, Satan gets cast into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. These children, I think, are going to be given new bodies and be preached to for a thousand years. And then after that, Satan's going to be loosed. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not uh, worshipped the beast, neither his image neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead, this is the unsaved, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, if everybody in heaven is saved, how is Satan going to deceive these people? Well, I think they're the, um, the, the children that are going to be allowed to grow up, the abortioned, abortion, abortioned children and what have you. That's kind of how I see it. And he, uh, and, and, okay, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. All right, so here it is. They're, gonna, they're surrounding the city, Jerusalem, and they're going to try to fight against with Satan against Christ. And what happens? And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Ah. And the, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great, great white throne. Okay, now this is the resurrection and judgment of the unsaved. If you're at the great white throne judgment, you got a problem. And I saw a great, great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose faith, face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right, in um, Zechariah 14 and verse 8. Well, let's go verse 7. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living waters, living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. So, 
living waters, right? Let's take a look at living waters in the book of Revelation. All right, let's take a look. Before we go to Revelation, let's go to John chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Now, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel when they split off from Judah. Verse 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called uh, S-Y-C-H-A-R, Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now, Jacob's well, a well of water, okay? Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Read Jeremiah 3.8. God divorced Israel. But he didn't divorce Judah. And Samaria was the capital of Israel. See, the Jews must have known that. But not only that, uh, when the Assyrians came in and took Israel captive, I mean, they left behind some, but... Um, you know, if you were smart, you'd leave behind the farmers, right? But uh, they would—they uh, brought in heathens to live in Samaria, and then they relocated a lot of the Israelites. So, northern Israel was a mix. Verse 9, Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Remember Jesus did the, uh, the thing about the, uh, the good Samaritan? Oh, yeah. Jesus answered, verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have, have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Didn't we just read that in Zechariah 14? Oh, yeah, living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Listen carefully. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Now who was Jacob? Jacob's name was changed by God to Israel. This woman said, Art thou greater than our, our father Jacob? She was obviously a child of Israel, probably divorced Israel. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, you notice Jesus didn't rebuke her. He didn't tell her, oh no, you're not a child of Jacob, Israel. No, 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 no. He didn't say that to her. He said, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Ah, he's offering her living water for everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw, Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that sayest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. 
Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh that ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah's, Messiah's cometh. She knows that the Messiah is coming. I know that Messiah's cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. You see, that's Christ going to give her the living water, right? All right, let's go to Revelation. All right, let's read uh, Revelation chapter 7, and I guess we'll close this out. Verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, and the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. I think I'd rather have the seal of the living God than the mark of the beast, but hey, that's just my opinion. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the sea, I mean the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our gods in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel, not the whole world. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Aser, Asher, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephtalim uh, were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand. They were the Levi was the priest tribe. Judah was the tribe of the kings. Okay. Uh, of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zo Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. And after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God! which sitteth upon the throne and under the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. And that's a long time, people. Forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes." All right, um, I hope you learned something, why there will be children in the thousand-year millennium, uh, who it is that Satan gets to fight against Jerusalem at the end of the millennium, uh, when the final act happens, when God throws the Satan, the devil, into the, the lake of fire, 
And then after that, there will be the great white throne judgment where the unsaved will be uh, judged and uh, death and hell cast into the lake of fire. And then after that, it will be eternity where time is of no more. And um, I hope to be with many of you fine people. And, um, you know, what can I tell you? For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. Living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All honor to him and glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.